Now, what's your favorite deer hunting tree, deer habitat tree? You know, you could go through, there's, uh, there's qualities for each type of tree. Um, for example, conifers. You know, a, a conifer offers snow hindrance cover. What that means, snow hindrance protection, where snow will come and start to filter and sift uh, through the boughs, and it makes it so deer can move around those conifers uh, a lot faster than they would out in open hardwoods, where snow is just falling right on the ground and, and pushing that total depth. Um, also creates thermal protection, so it knocks down the wind, insulates deer that are down there. Uh, great screening, visual screening. So this year we're going to be adding some Norway spruce up along our, our road just to block the house and what we're doing um, out in our fields with our switchgrass and pheasants and pollinator blends and food plots. And we're trying to screen those off a little bit more, including the shrubs we already have there and the switchgrass. So oaks, obviously a great mass producer. Um, we have a white oak right over here by the ranger. And, you know, I thought about start, starting over here. We want to get over here. We're excited to show you this, but... Um, you know, white oak, incredible acorns that uh, white, white oak produces, and uh, they're preferred early season, uh, late September, October, where red oaks aren't as attractive, but they really provide the bulk of the season for uh, uh, some type of browse, for a, t a portion of a, daily, a deer's daily uh, browse limit. And that's the thing we want to mention is that, like in the case of the acorns, um, they're similar to woody browse in that they're hard to digest. So deer need something else. They need diversity. They need diversity anywhere they're at. But you can't count on those acorns to drive and direct a deer herd, just like you can't count on conifer to drive and direct a deer herd. But I'll tell you a tree that is, is becoming really one of my favorites, especially up in here in the north. Um, it's not a favorite of foresters and loggers. I've even had a forester recommend to a client this client needed a quarter mile screening to get back to the woods and he's kind of like bummed because he had a quarter mile of box elder on a fence row that the forester told him to squirt and hack and get rid of and replace with something else that was more timber more of a timber production tree and what bad advice for a deer hunting property when you need to access a cross because this is what you can get <clears throat> with those box elders and i get excited about these box elder trees um, Certainly not a timber production tree. This is a tree that I hinge cut last year when Dylan was out here. We're part of this bedding area back behind Dylan. But look at how prolific that regeneration has been just in one year. See this right here? These are four to five foot shoots, maybe even six foot. I would say that's more like six foot right there. And that's what's great about these box elders. And Dylan, if you come on over a little bit, if you look at this new growth on the box elder, we're in the dead of winter, end of January. And look how pliable that is. It's pliable because there's full of moisture and it's kind of juicy. It's, uh, it's not like eating a dead and dried stick if you look at that. It took a while to get it to bend. And then look at that green right under the bark right there. That's fresh, it's juicy. I'm not gonna eat it, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's very tender if you notice that compared to a lot of things, briars or whatever else there might be out in the woods right now. Bottom line though, it's prolific. We can take this box elder, hinge cut it, and look at the sprouts we're getting. Now when you combine several box elders, look at this thicket we're producing right here. And it's all thicket full of food. So what we're, produing, we're producing with this is a high volume of food in this location just by cutting, regenerating this. And the cool thing about this is it'll turn into more box elder trees. A lot of times that, that log that's laying down on the ground right there, It'll actually take root down below and you'll have a row of box elder trees that we can cut, cut down again someday. If you look at this stump right here, look how prolific that growth is out of that stump. Again, some of these shoots are incredible just from one year. Look at these right here coming out of that. It's, it's amazing how much growth you can get and that times everything we did in here. So you can understand why I come down here, I don't get excited about, we don't have any conifers. I'd like to add some conifers down here that's a cool component. But again, we're not gonna drive the deer herd with a conifer, they can't browse. So there's no food within conifers. Um, great cover, great screening, but you have to have this. And, and especially when you have box elder like this that we can cut and you get all this regeneration, then it equals a lot of screening too. You can look up here, even in the snow, 
and there's a lot of locations to height, especially with this horizontal cover, and that's what's important too. You know, sometimes we get some cuttings that are hung up, or you have to cut over the top of something else or a hillside, so they stay up a little bit higher. But what we're trying to do is put brows on the ground for the deer, and when we're putting brows at head level for them, we're also putting cover there. So I come down a location like this, and even if we had some scattered conifers down here, and I'd probably use a white pine or a white spruce because they're shade tolerant. That way we can plant them, get them back in some of the tops that are not connected, they're dead. And so we can protect those, those conifers. I don't, you know, it's cool to see some of the white oaks that are down here. We have an old cherry tree right here. But what I really get excited about are the box elders because I know that this is quick work in this area of just two or three acres, maybe four acres at the most, that we can focus on cutting the majority of these box elders down, if not all of them, and we can enhance and improve and create an outstanding bedding area. And it's a bedding area that's pretty cool because it can be used, you know, they're not down here really focusing in this area in the summertime. They're more up in the, the hardwood tops near the ag fields. But when it comes to October, end of September, and then into November, December, all the way into March, deer need browse. A lot of the food plots are gone, the ag fields are picked, and they need stems per acre for cover. And that box elder can provide a huge supply of what they need for the entire winter. We take an area like this, we cut that box elder down. Now we get briars growing in between weeds, herbaceous growth, but especially hardwood regeneration. So we actually get a pretty good level of diversity down here just by taking that sunlight and putting it on the ground. We have the complement of the huge support of box elder. Now red maple is a favorite of mine too. You can get red maple to regenerate. It's very uh, good browse for deer too. But there's nothing that beats uh, box elder like this for not only regeneration power but also supplying deer browse and cover all at the same time. So it does a lot. You know, acorns are limited, no cover. Even the best of them, those big, nice white acorns that are back here, they're limited supply, they're more early season, but they don't provide cover. Again, conifer, great cover, no food. And we can go on and on with a lot of these other, um, other trees and species that are out there. But if you have box elder in your area, count yourself lucky. And if you don't, I'm looking around here, Dylan, you can see it. Yeah, there's some over there. There's some wings. Yep, yep. yep. The seeds are right back there. We have a lot of pockets of those seeds around there. And you get those on some bare soil out in the field. Dylan, I've been thinking about doing that. We talked about conifer pockets and box elder pockets out in our um, pollinator and switchgrass areas for additional cover. I talked to Dylan yesterday about getting some more uh, shrubs from big rock trees out in those areas uh, for further protection for the rabbits and the pheasant. But um, those out in open fields, they're very prolific. They grow easy. Just throw the seeds on the ground, get it on bare soil. And not only are they easy to take care of, manage, hinge, and cut and are prolific, but they're easy to plant too. So that's why they're quickly becoming my favorite tree, maybe yours too. And if not, I hope you have some type of species in your area that's similar to this, but boy, it's hard to duplicate the magic and the power of the box elder when it relates to deer hunting, creating bedding areas, and deer habitat in general. Hey, I'm really excited to introduce to you our Hills and Thermals web class. It's something we worked on all year. We're trying to put lots of facets of scouting, aerial imagery, diagrams on the whiteboard to really teach you how the wind moves through hills and how you should find bedding areas, how it relates to deer movements in general, how that relates to, this is a bedding area stand, this is a food source afternoon stand. We really tried to put this together and offer you a complete picture of how to navigate hills and find better success consistently where you hunt.